On the foreign scene, United Nations confirms 450,000 displaced people from Rafa within one week. And in sport, Flamingo's head coach expresses optimism ahead. FIFA World Cup qualifier against Burkina Faso. Now the details. I am Taiwo Barua. Lagos State Government says it is working in partnership with the private sector to ensure environmental sustainability and security for school children in its basic and secondary schools. Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Jamiu Ali Balogun, stated this at the commissioning and handover of a block of classrooms plus furniture at Amu Wadofi Junior School and other projects at Mile 2 School Complex. Ali Balogun noted that the intervention is a private sector driven corporate social responsibility by Port Terminal Multi Services and a service to humanity. The Commissioner called on teachers and students to utilize their facilities judiciously for learning and teaching processes, engage in extracurricular activities as government intensifies effort to scale up technology and education in the state. Ali Balogun also harped on the need for good parenting to ensure better learning and also to curb the issue of drug abuse and cultism. As we said, we are a government cannot do everything. And in the, today's global war, it is about collaboration in all fronts. So it is about social corporate responsibility of each companies, whether small or big, to come up with something extraordinary within their community so that people can have their feet, be it building school, be it building road. But today we witnessed two things, even three things, road, transformer, and the school. That is more or less a beautiful thing. Coming from the private sector, partnership in education. In on his part, the permanent secretary of the ministry, Abayomi Abolaji, said the group had been collaborating with the state government in implementing several projects, including construction of access road, gate, fence, new block of classrooms, provision of mini transformer and water tanks at Mile 2 school complex, urging the teachers and students to take ownership of the facilities. The group's managing director, uh, Sanio Russo thanked Governor Babajide Somulu's administration for its support and vision, restating the commitment of the group to social responsibility with focus on environmental sustainability, education, among other interventions, to equip future leaders and create a positive impact in the community. We've been uh, supporting these uh, uh, school facilities and uh, in the last four years alone, we have built a number of projects. Uh, we feel the obligation to give back to our community. So we want uh, to be in an environment which is uh, thriving, and that's why we've been supporting both the community and uh, the schools. Stakeholders at the event thanked the present administration for partnering with the private sector to bring about development in its bid to move education and other sectors in the state forward to enviable heights. Lagos State Examinations Board is set to commence screening tests into the 16 model colleges and upgraded junior secondary schools for the year 2024-2025 academic session. Director and Registrar, Lagos State Examinations Board, Adebayo Onrushola said the screening test will hold at the five designated CBT centers across the six education districts of the state between Tuesday 28 and Friday 31st of May. Onrushola said eligible pupils who are interested in writing the entrance examination but are yet to register have been given a one-week grace to do so. So as the registration portal will be closed on Friday, 17th of May. He noted that applicants are to come to the examination venue with the printed copy of their examination slip while warning that electronic gadgets such as phone, iPad, 
phone watch and the others will not be allowed in the examination hall. The Lagos State Security Trust Fund, LSSTF, has attributed its success in the last 17 years to transparency and accountability in the area of its operations and relationships with all stakeholders in the state security ecosystem. Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of LSSDF, Abdul Razak Balogun, stated this when he received delegates from the Kogi State Security Trust Fund who are in the state on a two-day working visa to understudy the activities of the LSSDF. Balogun, who noted that Kogi State is the 15th state to visit LSSDF for an understudy and exchange of ideas, expressed hope that the purpose of the visit will be achieved and applied to areas applicable in the Kogi State security ecosystem. According to him, LSSDF deals with counterparts from other states in a high level of openness when they come for understudy and the same courtesy will be extended to the Kogi State delegation. On his part, Executive Chairman, Kogi State Security Trust Fund, Abdul Rahim Ozuhe Ohire, said the visit is to learn new methods in order to attract donations and deploy fresh ideas to its effort of stre strengthening security agencies in Kogi. Ozuhe Ohire noted that his agency is working on a bill which is seeking compulsory donations by companies and private individuals in Kogi State to the fund, adding that government allocation, which the fund is currently working with, is not enough to carry out its mandate of improving security. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, has urged oil marketers to open compressed natural gas CNG points at their filling stations to increase accessibility for consumers. Chief Executive of NMDPRA, Farouk Hamid, who made the call at a meeting with key oil marketing companies in Abuja, said new applications for retail licenses would no longer be approved without CNG points. Hamid, who describes the push by the federal government to encourage the use of CNG as an alternative petrol, as a revolution, said the government is determined to reduce the burden of petrol on the economy. And now to the rest of the stories. The Federal Executive Council, FEC, chaired by President Bola Tinubu, has approved the establishment of a tripartite committee to streamline visa processes and acquisition for investors interested in investing in Nigeria. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, stated this after the FEC meeting held at the council chambers of the presidential villa Abuja. Idris said the ease of doing business is also tied to the country's visa processes and going forward, investors, tourists, among others, would find it easy to acquire a visa within 48 hours. And the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has suggested that Nigeria may need to raise a supplementary budget to accommodate the proposed minimum wage increase for workers. IMF said this is because the negotiated amount may surpass the budgeted amount in the original 2024 budget. It gave this recommendation in its latest staff country report for the country, saying the government might need to raise the domestic and external borrowing ceilings to prevent fresh borrowings from the apex banks, ways and means. The new minimum wage has been an ongoing matter between organized labor and the government since the beginning of this year to cushion the impact of the harsh economy. Speaker of the Niger State House of Assembly, Abdul Malik Sakindaji, has stopped the planned wedding for 100 orphan girls in his constituency, saying he will not grace the occasion. Sarkindaji took the decision following the action of the Women Affairs Minister, Oju Kennedy Ohane, who dragged the Speaker to the court 
to hold the wedding. The speaker made this known during a media briefing. He said the funds provided would not be withdrawn, noting that his motive for wanting to sponsor the wedding was the state of poverty of the girl's parents and not a constituency project as reported in the media. In foreign news now, the United Nations says almost 450,000 Palestinians have fled from Rafa over the past week as Israeli tanks reportedly push deeper into the southern Gaza city. UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, NURWA, warned that people face constant exhaustion, hunger and fear. And this is after Israel's military says that it is continuing operations against terror target in the east of the city where more than a million people had been sheltering. Now Israeli operations in northern Gaza have displaced another 100,000 people. The military ordered civilians to evacuate eastern Rafa and Jabalia for their own safety before starting the assault. But the total of those displaced in recent days is equivalent to almost a quarter of Gaza's 2.3 million population. In sport now, head coach of Nigeria's under-17 girls at Flamingos, Bankolilo Kiri, has expressed upbeat that the team will defeat Burkina Faso to the final round ticket. Olo Okiri gave the assurance on arrival of the team in Abuja. The Flamingos are back in the country following their FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup qualifying match against Burkina Faso in Bamako, Mali on Saturday. The match ended a 1-1 draw. The head coach called on Nigerians based in Abuja and environs to stomp the MKO Abiola National Stadium this Saturday to support the girls as they aim to stroll past the Burkina Bay into the final round of the race. And that's it on the news at six, but just before we go, speed thrills, but kills. Please do not drive the unspecified speed limit. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms X Traffic Radio 961, Instagram Lagos Traffic Radio 961, Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website at trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that under the Sawalu administration, Loma launched the Lagos State Blue Box Recycling? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Government said it is working in partnership with the private sector to ensure environmental sustainability and security for children in its basic and secondary schools. The Federal Executive Council, FEC, chaired by President Bola Tinubu, has approved the establishment of a tripartite committee to streamline visa processes and acquisition for investors interested in investing in Nigeria. We also told you that the United Nations confirmed that almost 450,000 Palestinians have fled from Rafa over the past week as Israeli tanks reportedly push deeper into the southern Gaza city. And finally, a sport head coach of Nigeria's under-17 girls, Flamingos, Bankolilo Kiri, has expressed upbeat that the team will defeat Burkina Faso to the final round ticket. For contact for the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Adewali Oluoporoku. I am Taiwo Barua. Thank you for listening. Good evening. <laughs>